So basically you organize your data into each category or each um, data and you want to know how often does that data appear. And then relative frequency, which is relative frequency is, is you basically you take each of your frequency divided by the sum of all frequency, which is in this case, the total of every in data that you have. Okay, so again, relative frequency, as you will see later, is basically the percentage of something. Um, so those are the two things that they will ask you um, for this book, for this book, for this author, uh, the two things that, that he um, emphasized or he focusing in is a frequency distribution table and a relative frequency. Uh, we do not do a cumulative frequency. Uh, some other book, they do it, but for this book, for this author, he does not focus on cumulative frequency. He only focus on uh, relative frequency and uh, frequency distribution table by itself, okay? So, um, I will go through the definition first and, and then we will attack the problem. Uh, well, I thought I did that way, but anyway, uh, let's attack the problem first. <laughs> uh, 2.1, we're we looking at, the, at a uh, frequency distribution for a qualitative data or qualitative variable. Reminder, qualitative, da uh, qualitative data is your category, right? So in this case, um, if I give you this, this data, if you look at this table, I have uh, five, seven, right? right? Seven, five, seven. So I have 35 individual letter gray here, which is again, reminder your letter gray is qualitative, right? And let me ask you, uh, letter gray, is this a ordinal or nominal? Is this ordinal or nominal? Um, hopefully you guys say is, Ordinal, right? No. Yes, ordinal. Um, no, the no is not on Canvas yet. I will, uh, again, I, like I mentioned, I will post this note on, on, on Canvas after, well, not this note, this PowerPoint slide on Canvas after the meeting. Uh, and when I post the video of the lecture, I will post this thing up there too. So you will have this, uh, you will have this up there on uh, later tonight, whenever I post, um, whenever I post the video. So again, um, um, ordinal because uh, the letter gray have some ranking into it, right? So looking at this thing here, they ask us to construct a frequency distribution table uh, and calculate your relative frequency for each of your car category. So again, frequency distribution table is very easy, which is again, to construct this frequency distribution table, the first thing is we need to know uh, how many different categories category we have, right? So in this case, I obviously agree that my gray is my category, which is my A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And then again, now all you do is you just go into your individual data, your raw data, this is your raw data, and you basically tally up how many A you have, right? So you just go in here and you just say, okay, let me circle my A, which is in this case, I see that I have six A. Right. So looking at this thing here, my frequency, which is again, how frequent, how often does your A appear, which is I have six A's, which is I have six A student for this test or whatever this, this item is. Right. And then you go in and you just basically tally your B, which is again, in this case, you go in, you circle your B, which is again, looking at this thing here, you have seven B. And again, we just do this for every single category, which is again, uh, as you can see, this is all my C, which is in this case, you can see that we have nine C, nine circle, right? And then we go in for the D, which is again, in this case, we have six. And we go in for the F, which is again, in this case, we have seven F. So to check yourself, to check yourself, basically, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, I glanced through this thing here, I have five, seven, five by seven, which is I have 30, 35 individual data. So to check yourself, you have to add your frequency up. Uh, your, your, the six, the seven, the nine, the six, the seven, you have to add them up and make sure that they are equal to 35. In this case, it's equal to 35. So I know that my, my frequency, and this is your frequency distribution table, ladies and gentlemen, um, maybe with the exception of the total. But again, this is your frequency distribution table, which is how frequent, how often, does your data appear, right? And 
the next thing, which is again, very, you, you probably encountered this before. This is probably not the first time you look at this thing here. Uh, the other thing is the relative frequency, right? The relative frequency reminder, the relative frequency is basically you take the frequency divided by the total frequency, right? The sum of all frequency, which is basically all you do is you take the six, you take the frequency of A, which is six, divide by the total frequency, which is 35 to give you 0.17. Um, be careful on connect math, be careful on connect math. Sometimes they will ask you for three decimal places. Sometimes they ask you two. Uh, this one here, I just, I just have two decimal places. Uh, and again, um, you have to round up to two decimal places. Um, so again, one thing is, uh, is I want to point out to you guys, one thing is your relative frequency is, will always be a decimal and it will always be less than one. Okay, uh, because all you do is you take the individual frequency divided by the total, your individual frequency will never be bigger than your total. It's either be equal to the total or smaller. And if it's smaller than the total, it's gonna be a, a decimal, right? So again, each fraction is a part of a whole, which is again, all this thing here is, is your decimal. And if you add all of your relative frequency, if you add the 17 plus the 20 plus the 26 plus the 17 plus the 20, it has to be equal to 100 or in this case, it's equal to one. Like I mentioned earlier, your relative frequency is the percentage, ladies and gentlemen, they are interchangeable. Meaning again, looking at this thing here, everybody see that if, if, if we have 17, I can say that there are 17%, 17% of my student have an A, right? So again, um, the relative frequency, if it's 0.17, which is you move your decimal two places to the left, to the right, sorry, two places to the right, which is that will give you the percentage, right? So again, 17% uh, is my A student, 20% is my B student, 26% is my C student, 17% is my D, and 20 is my F student, right? So again, our relative frequency and percentage, they are interchangeable in that way. Okay, so again, the maximum, the percentage, the maximum percentage is equal to 100%. And 100% is correlate to one, right? The decimal is one. So again, um, that's what your, your, your um, frequency distribution table look like. Uh, the frequency distribution table does not have a relative frequency. And again, on your homework, they will ask you to construct the, the frequency distribution table. Basically, you go in and you tally your data right? Relative frequency is you take each of your frequency divide by the total frequency of, uh, of your data, okay? So again, this is your qualitative data, which is again, your category. Now, your, your frequency distribution table for quantitative. Uh, your quantitative, which is involve your number. And, and sometimes, and, and, and this is where I want to first, I want to go over all the definition and then we attack the problem at the end. Okay. So the first thing is because your qua quantitative, uh, because of your quantitative quantitative data, sometimes the data is very massive, uh, and sometimes the range. Maybe later on you will see that sometimes the range is very big. So we want to group them together, and in terms of group them together, we have to have some class, right? Um, let's let's take a look at our grade for instance. Our grade our grade breakdown is. My class is 90, 90 to 100 is, is an A. Yes, for relative, relative uh, frequency, it will always be a decimal, yes. Uh, yes, for connect math, when they ask you for relative frequency, uh, it will always be a decimal. Uh, make sure to pay attention on how many decimal places they ask you to route to. Okay, um, but again, uh, looking at this quantitative data is basically like I mentioned, um, basically you want to group your data together and you group your data together as in a class. Uh, the most important thing is the class width. The class width is basically how big is your class, meaning between the first class when you jump to the second class, how many units did you jump? Okay, so that's what, we, that's what your class width is in, in the sense of that. So the requirement for choosing a class, which is again, this is basically is in your book, is on your, is on the other, uh, the author 
item I just take it and, and paste over here. Basically, you have to account all of your data, all of your data have to be in your frequency distribution table. Each class cannot overlap each other. Uh, and again, each of your item have to be uh, accounted for basically it, okay? The other thing we have, which is the histogram, uh, as you will see, the histogram is basically a, a similar to a ball graph, similar to the ball graph, it's just that the difference between a histogram and the ball graph is that each of your ball, each of your ball have to physically touch each other, okay? If the ball are separately, then it's a ball graph. If they touch each other, we call it a histogram. Okay, uh, and again, how do we construct the histogram? It's basically, you take your frequency distribution table and you convert to your histogram, as you will see later, we do this, this item here, which is again, the, the most important thing about histogram, ladies and gentlemen, is your vertical, your vertical axis, your vertical axis, which is uh, this item right here, this will always, can only be your frequency. It's either your frequency, or your relative frequency. So your vertical axis, which is your, let's say your Y axis here, your Y axis can only be your, your frequency or your relative frequency. Your data or your variable will be your horizontal item here. Your horizontal item can be the, the age, can be the weight, can be whatever your data is, whatever you try to collect is your your horizontal item. So again, the vertical line, the vertical item here will always only be frequency if they use if they ask you for frequency histogram or relative frequency if they ask you for relative frequency histogram. Okay. So let's take a look at this thing here, which is uh, your your histogram have some you no know, have some visual effects for you guys, which is later on we will see a lot, which is there are three types of shape that we have for our histogram. Uh, your histogram can be symmetric, meaning as you will see later when we get to chapter chapter six, bell-shaped curve uh, or standard normal, which is again, symmetric is basically, as you can see, they have like a high peak and go back down, right? We start from low, go up to high and go back down kind of like a bell-shaped curve. And you will hear me say a lot about this thing here later on, which is a bell-shaped curve, symmetric. So this thing here look approximately symmetric, right? It's basically they have a high peak and they go back down, right? The other two is a uh, positively skewed or skewed to the right. Uh, and again, one thing about this, I, I don't know who come up with, with the name. I, I know you guys say, wait a minute, Mr. Tran, when I look at the, when I look at the table or not the table, when I look at the histogram, when I look at the item, it appear to be on the left side, right? If you look at, if you, let me go back. If you look at this thing here, you say, wait a minute, it's increased on the left and then decreasing. Uh, one thing is, it's not, our perspective. One thing is, is for the histogram is the graph perspective looking at us. Uh, so you have to think in terms of the, the graph perspective. Uh, does it increase on the left side or on the right side of the, of the graph when the graph looking at you? It's not you looking at the graph, okay? So looking at this thing here, as you can see, if the graph looking out to us, it's increased to the right of the graph, right? It's on the left of us, but it's on the right of the graph. So because it's increased on the right of the graph, that's why we say that this is skewed to the right, okay? So basically looking at this thing here to answer this question, and again, uh, to answer this question, you have to look at the graph perspective, not your perspective, okay? I know that you're looking into the graph, you say, wait a minute, the, the red graph is look like it's on the left side. It's increased on the left side and decreased on the right side. Right, but again, it's not our perspective, but it's the graph perspective looking at you. Okay, so the blue graph is increased on the left side of the graph and decrease on the right side. Uh, I'm sorry, increase on the on the yeah on the <laughs> from the graph perspective is increased on the left and decrease on the right of the graph. But from our perspective, it's diff is the opposite. Okay, so again, uh, just think in terms of the graph looking at you. For, for when, when on the homework they ask you, is this a, a, a symmetric, 
skewed to the left or skewed to the right, just imagine that the graph looking at you, and if it's increased on the on the right side of the graph, or you know, or you can think in the term of opposite, right? On on your side, if it's increased on the on your left, it's it's the right. If it's increased on your right, it's the left. Okay, so it's skewed to the left or to the right in terms of that. Uh, but let's take a look at this thing here, which is again, um, this is your basically this is your 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 overall question. Oh, perfect timing. Uh, your overall question is something like this, right? Uh, given this thing here, they they will give you some his his you know, his story, or they will give you some story. Um, so you know whatever story they they give you, this is what they have. They as you can see, this is very massive data, right? We have sixty data. We have 60 data here, which is again, this data is basically uh, the amount of um, the amount of minute, right? In minute, uh, the amount of minute uh, of the eruption of of of, of um, the Yellowstone National Park, right? So again, this is the 60 individual minute of of this eruption, right? So. Hmm. Maybe that is wrong. Maybe uh, it's in second because they say that uh, would typically last between one to four minutes. Uh, th maybe the author I I copy this from the ebook and I paste it up here. Uh, I, maybe the the following data percent is the duration in second maybe not minute because if it's a minute 88 minute that's an hour uh an hour and and 28 um minute which is uh that's contradict of what this thing say uh, but anyway uh i guess we should forget about the the information they're giving us let's take a look at the data itself right so the data itself, this is what the data we have, which is 91. If you glance through this data, you can see that 66 is the smallest data. Uh, and 116 is the highest data, right? So if you glance through this, well, not 66, 61, 59. Okay, uh, if we glance through this thing here, probably 59 is the smallest data. And the highest data is 116, right? So this is your question, right? Your follow-up question is this, which is construct a frequency distribution table using a class width of phi and using fit to phi as a lower class limit for the first class. So this one is straightforward. Uh, one thing is you will see that there are two types of problems that we will deal with, ladies and gentlemen, which is one problem is they give us the class width and they tell us where to start or how to start in terms of the, the lower class limit. The other problem is they don't give us the class width and we have to find the class width, which is the next example I, I will show you guys, okay? So looking at this thing here, so this thing very straightforward, as you can see, they, they tell us that the class width, meaning every time you jump, you have to jump five unit, right? And they tell us what to start, which is everybody agree that they tell us that we need to start at 55, which is my lower limit of the first class. That's what they tell me. And the class width, which is every time I jump, I have to add five units to it, right? So the first class jump to the second class, I have to add five, which